other hummingbirds. You'll you'll oh, put yeah, a hummingbird that. feeder. Yeah. yeah, they're really mean. Adam, you let me know when to start. Um, I don't really have much to do after this. So I'm not in a hurry. <laughs> yeah. If you're ready to go and it's uh, six o'clock, I can introduce you and we'll get going. All right, everyone. Sure. The Santa Fe Public Library thanks Assis Gonzalez from the Santa Fe Children's Museum for presenting tonight. And if you have any questions, you can raise your hand or unmute yourself and, and just let us let us know and we'll do our best to answer. Yes, I just asked the yes questions when I'm not talking, okay? So yes, you can ask, <laughs> feel free to ask questions. I really prefer it if you ask questions. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, once again, my name is Asis Gonzalez. I'm from Santa Fe Children's Museum. Uh, usually uh, what I used to do is I used to take my planetarium from schools and I would show people planets and the stars. Uh, but of course, I can't do that in a little planetarium right now. So I'd show you the planets and the stars with my computer. Just to make sure this is working, what planet are we looking at right now? Earth. Yes, it is working. Earth, our very own planet Earth, the only planet in the solar system with tacos. Now, let's bring the Earth back to how it is right now. There we are. Uh -oh. There's a lot of ocean. That's the Pacific. There's a lot of daytime in the Pacific right now. So let's see if we go, we're over here somewhere. I'm actually in Albuquerque right now. That's where I live, but uh, I work a lot. I'm in Santa Fe a lot. So let's see where we're at on this little planet. We're in this kind of yellowish area because we live in a desert. Not a lot of rain where we live. What's really funny is it's harder to tell where we're at when we're this close to the shadow. Ah, there we go. Albuquerque is right here. That means that Santa Fe is right there. And of course, the Earth spins. So what's happening right now as the Earth is spinning? So you're right there, and we're spinning towards this big shadow. What's going to happen when we go into that shadow? It's going to turn black. That's yeah. nighttime. That is nighttime. nighttime. You can you can even see the red from the sunset. And but we, we humans were so afraid of the dark that once we go into nighttime, what we do is we turn on all our city lights. So those are city lights. That's the glow from all our lights at nighttime. It's one of the funny things about how we changed our world. We have so many lights up at, during the night that we can see clouds at night. You know, you're actually not supposed to be able to see clouds at night. If you're in a perfectly dark area, you can't see the clouds. It just looks like chunks of the sky are missing. It's kind of creepy actually, but because <laughs> we didn't grow up like that. We grew up seeing the clouds at night for the glow of the city, all these city lights. Here's our uh, United States. There's Mexico. There's South America. Look at that. Ooh, you can even see the lights from all the planes and the boats. I never even noticed that. So yeah, the daytime on Earth comes from the sun. The sun lights up half of the world, and the other half of the world is in the shadow. It's because it's on the opposite side of the sun over there. Now, 
one of the things that we take for granted is that Earth is the only planet with water on the top. Here on Earth, we can just go to a river, we can go to a beach, we can go to a, a lake, or a, so we can just swim in this water. There's actually lots of water in the solar system, but most of it is either frozen or underground. Here on Earth, you can just like be in it. Can't do that on any other planet. Which, by the way, do you know what the solar system is? It's kind of in the name. You know, in Spanish, we call the sun Sol, S-O-L. Here's the sun, our bright star. And I think most people think of the solar system as just planets, but it's way more than that. Of course, we do. The planets are a very important part. We have eight planets, five dwarf planets, and almost 600 moons, depending on who you ask, really. These are the gas giants and the little rocky planets. So Sol is what we call the sun in Spanish, solar system, everything around our sun. These are the rocky planets. There's Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. I want you to notice how small Mars is. That's actually very important for later. Our Earth is very small. It spins at 1,000 miles per hour. And you spin with it. Actually, there's a fun way you can find out how big the Earth is. Ah, that's too close. If it spins at 1,000 miles per hour and we have a 24-hour day, how big is the Earth? Can you figure it out from those numbers? Some of you may be too small for that, but you can just answer if you know. 24,000 miles. Exactly. Well, it's like 23,500, something like that. It's close to 24,000 miles. So that's how long the Earth is, about 24,000 miles. It spins at 1,000 miles per hour. Everything in space moves. There's nothing in space that's not moving. And one of those things that moves a lot and that we really can't tell it's moving is the moon. That little tiny dot over there is our moon. Let's make time go by faster. Eee. I am the moon going by you really fast. I'm the moon. The moon goes around the Earth at 2,700 miles per hour. When you see it in the sky, it looks like it's just stuck there, being lazy, not moving. But it is moving. So this is your Santa Fe sky right now. The sun just went down. And actually the moon isn't up yet. So I, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna move time forward, all right? So right now this is gonna be about eight o'clock. This is eight o'clock, eight. This is good at eight o'clock. So this is your sky at eight o'clock tonight. You can look towards the south. It's like looking towards me in Albuquerque. And in the sky, you're gonna see these very, two very bright looking stars. You've probably already seen them. There are two planets, Jupiter and Venus. And now the real thing I wanna to bring to you is the moon. The moon's not up right now. Ooh, there's a chat. What did I say? <laughs> Apparently I said the wrong planets. Thank you, Tad. Uh, I had a I had a brain skip. Yes, that's Jupiter and Saturn. That's embarrassing. Now it's recorded for the for the masses. We'll have to edit it out. I'll have to move my mouth and just, just have to add in the right planets. So yes, that's Jupiter and Saturn. And actually one of the real cool things. So I'm gonna move time forward again. But this time, instead of just moving to tonight, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna move the days, all right? So this is the sky tonight at 8 p.m. 
Let's go to October 14th. That's tomorrow at 8 p.m. Not much of a difference. But how about the next day? No, nope, not much of a difference either the next day. The next day. The next day. The next day. Yep. Oh, did you see something appeared right there? Do you see that? Rachel, did you have a question? It's a crescent moon. It's a little crescent moon, yes. Leslie, did you have a question? Ari does. Um, oh. <laughs> why can you see the moon in the morning sometimes? Well, let me show you why. So there's a little crescent moon right there right now, right? Is the moon going to stay there? No. No. So this is October 19th at 8 o'clock. We're going to go to October 20th. Now look at the moon, all right? October 20th. Right now. Do you see that? All right, I'm going to go forward one more day. Look at the moon right there. I'm going to go to October 21st. The 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th, 30th, 31st, 32nd, I mean, November 1st, November 2nd, November 3rd. Now is the moon gone? Do you see the moon anymore? <laughs> the moon is still there it's just on the other side of earth so we just have to we have to make time go by forward so remember the sky the sun and everything moves because the earth spins we can there's the moon again but as we move as we move day by day the moon keeps going every day it's going to go to the left so if you see the moon one night look at that so I'm making, t I'm making the, the hour go by forward, but I'm also skipping days. And look at the moon. Ah, it's getting a little bit smaller. See, that's Venus. That, re that really hurts me, by the way, that I made that mistake. <laughs> I have a question. Um, What's your question? Uh, well, I... My mom's on here too, and I always explain to her that the let's say you see the moon and it's ten o'clock at night. Uh huh. It's gonna be in that same spot, roughly an hour later the next night, and so on and so on. And depending on the time of year, that varies. I think between forty-five minutes to an hour and something. But I don't know when that time of year changes. And I don't really know how to explain that to my mom. <laughs> so the, the, the simple thing is that the moon just goes around the earth, uh, regardless of how the year goes. The, the year is based on the earth going around the sun. Okay. But the moon, mm -hmm. So the earth goes around the sun, but the, the moon goes around the earth. The moon doesn't care about the sun that much. The moon just goes around the earth and so it doesn't matter what you know day it is or what time of year it is. The moon is just going to keep going around. So actually, what I was going to show you here's a here's the morning. Back to the screen because I. So here's the morning, and this morning on a, a, a November 11th, you'll see the moon. So I'm the moon. So let's let's go back to what you were saying. So let's go see the moon at some time at like 10 p.m. But you hit. I don't know what I hit. Uh, so this is this is eight, nine, ten. There we go. This is ten p.m. Uh, and then let's say you see the moon one of these nights. There's the moon right there. So if you see the moon one night, the next day it is going to change its spot because it moves around us. So this is uh, November twenty third at actually it's almost eleven. Here's there we go. That's ten o'clock. So this is a November 23rd at 10 o'clock. Now there's the moon. Now we're going to go to November 24th at 10 o'clock, right? Watch where the moon is. So it moves because it's going around the earth. Now it's so far away, your brain can't tell it's moving. It just looks like it's stuck there, but it is actually moving. 
So within the hour, it will have actually moved, but it's so small to our brains and eyesight that we can't tell. So that's why you kind of, it's usually best to see it one day and then the next day you'll see how much it has moved. All right, let's go back into space. Ah, it's still going really fast. Oop. Let's go to right now. And let's travel to the moon. You know, the moon has a day of the week named after it. It's almost everyone's least favorite day. Some people call it moon day. I call it Monday. This is the moon right here. There's the earth right over there. You see the moon actually receives day from the sun as well. It receives its light. There's the sun being hot. Here's the moon receiving light from the sun. And just like the earth, it's half day, half night. But look at this part. Have you ever seen this part of the moon? If you're standing right there on earth right now, can you see this side of the moon? This is what you'd see from earth. No. Nope, this is what you see from earth right there. A crescent. So we see a crescent just because we only see a little part of that daytime. A little bit of the daytime right there. But it's still all day. It still has a half day, but we just can't see this part. We're only seeing a little bit of it. Okay. And now, someone has a question? What's your question? Um, I can't see the um. The moon right now. Outside? I can't. No, right now it's not up in our sky, I think. Uh, it's too close to the I'm sun. In, I'm not in Tulsa. Tell me you're in Santa Fe. I'm in Santa Fe. Oh, yeah. I'm in Albuquerque. It doesn't change that much. But see, right now the moon is right there, really close to the sun. So it's going to be really hard to see. I'm going to have to give it a couple days. Here, let me show you when you'll be able to see the moon again. Uh, so this is October 13th, so right tonight. This is tonight. How about October 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, 21. Ah, sorry, there it is. <laughs> There's the moon right there. So by around the uh, 18th and 19th, you'll be able to see the moon again. So just a couple days from now. Right now we have to use this program to see it. The moon is very dusty. There is no rain. There is no wind on the moon. All the dust just sits there. In fact, before they actually landed on the moon for the first time, they were afraid that the little rocket ship was just gonna sink into the moon from all the dust. Luckily it did not. shot of the astronauts jumping you see those suits those suits weigh 300 pounds on the earth i weigh 300 pounds <laughs> it's like carrying a whole knee on your back but that's on earth I, uh, I'm a uh -huh. alien. wait say that again I'm, my weight is between 80 and 100 are you sure? <laughs> What's the question? How much on the moon? Ask him how much you weigh on the moon. Because you weigh different. How much would you weigh on the moon? Ah, there's actually a simple way of finding that out. So, yeah, uh, for those of you that don't know, 
Like, gravity, gravity is the force that pulls you down onto the earth. So every time you jump on earth, you get pulled back down. And that's gravity, all right? Now, because earth is bigger, it has more gravity, so it pulls you down even harder. The moon is very small, so it doesn't pull you down as much. So you actually weigh less on the moon. That's why even though those astronauts have suits that weigh 300 pounds on Earth, they don't weigh 300 pounds on the moon. In order to find how much you weigh on the moon, you take your weight. I don't know why this isn't moving. Ah, there we go. So 300 pounds, that's how much I weigh. And then you divide it by six. I would weigh 50 pounds on the moon. Uh, so how much did you weigh, Alan? Tell him, Benjamin, tell him. How much How much you weigh? You probably weigh like 60 pounds. No, it's between 80 and 80. I don't think so. <laughs> let's do 60. Let's do 60. No, uh, it's between 80 and 100. Oh, but that's, <laughs> all right, right, let's say you weigh 80. So 80 divided by 6. You would weigh about 13 pounds on the moon. 13 pounds. Mm -hmm. I'm not that much pounds. No, you're a lot more on Earth, but not on the moon. You, yeah, on the moon, you would weigh a little bit. You would be able to jump really high. So let's go, let's leave our Earth and moon system. Let's go to another planet that has a day of the week named after it. This planet is called Saturn. <laughs> We're actually moving, but space is so big that it felt like we weren't moving at all. Just everything was so far away. So this is Saturn. Can you, can you guess which name day of the week is named after Saturn? Saturday. Yeah, Saturn's day. Saturn's day. So Saturn is what they call a gas giant. <laughs> what that means is that Saturn is made out of clouds. All right. Now Earth is a rocky planet. It means that Earth has land, it has rocks, mountains, valleys, canyons, dirt, all this stuff. Saturn doesn't have that. If you were to try to land on Saturn, you would actually just fall through the clouds. And you would fall for a very, very long time. You would just keep falling and falling through the clouds. The worst part is these clouds aren't like Earth clouds. They're actually poisonous to humans. Not only that, is that the further and further down you falling into these clouds, the heavier and heavier they get. And they start to squeeze together on the inside of Saturn. And at one point, they squeeze together so hard that they would crush you. You'd be crushed. You'd be crushed by clouds. It's like if you had a one blanket, that's not very heavy. But if you had a million blankets on top of you, that would crush you. You'd be crushed by blankets. The same here, clouds. Clouds are made of, out of physical stuff. And so the more you add on top, the more weight you have pushing down. So that's what makes a gas giant. A gas giant planet is a planet made out of clouds. So there's no land, no dirt. They're big and fluffy. Oh, Melissa, did you have a question? Yeah. Why did Saturn have rings? Ah, well, no one really knows for sure. But first, let me show you what they're made out of before we discuss that a little bit. You see, the rings of Saturn are made out of ice. They're made out of uh, ice rocks, ice powder, icy stuff. So we're going to fly through the rings. Now you're gonna to wanna to think these are rocks 
They're not. They're ice. It's just that Saturn is far from the sun. So it doesn't get as much heat. And space is very cold. So these are chunks of ice. Um, 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 um. Is it water ice or is it made of something else? Uh, mostly water ice, yes. And some dust. A little bit of ammonia in there. There tends to be a lot of ammonia in these uh, space ices. That sounded weird. Space ices. So yeah, these are chunks of ice. That's what makes up the rings. Now they think that all this stuff came from a moon that kind of orbited too close to Saturn and it broke apart. Saturn has a lot of icy moons. The, the rings of Saturn are actually very new. They're not very old. Uh, one of the ways you can tell is how shiny they are. They're very shiny. As ice gets older in the solar system, it turns darker because it gets covered in dust and other things. And by the way, these lines in the rings are made by moons. You see the little lines? And we're going to go to one of those moons because it's one of my favorites, mostly just because it has a funny shape. It's called Pan. We're going to go to this line right there. That's This moon makes this line. Right here. Mr. Watch this moon. Can we yes. ask another question? Uh, hold on. Let me just okay. let this mirror. It looks like a little spaceship. Now you can ask your question. Have a spaceship ever gone to Saturn? Uh, well, we've only sent robots to Saturn. Uh, we haven't sent any spaceships. Robots! <laughs> so so the, the furthest that humans have ever been to is uh, the moon. Humans have not gone further than the moon because other than that, uh, it's too hard for humans to be in space. So they're still making on technology to to be able to travel in space for a very long time because it would take a couple of years to get to send to for humans to travel to Saturn. What size is Pan? Pan, I think, is about 20 miles long. Thank you, Tad. I was just about to answer about the robotic spacecraft. Yes, four, about four of them have been to Saturn. Uh, Voyager 1 and 2 have passed by Saturn. Um, it's only been about four, Tad. <laughs> so Pan is only 20 miles big. It's not very big. It's really tiny moon, and it looks like a little spaceship, but it's made out of ice. There's actually a couple of funny moons around Saturn. Uh, like uh, another one that's shaped like this is called Atlas. I hope I went to the right spot. I'm going to the Atlas star. I want to go to the Atlas dwarf moon. Look at that Atlas. Is that a pancake? Oh, Rachel, did you have a question? Why are the moons shaped like that? Well, there could be a couple of reasons. No one's entirely knows for sure. Uh, it is possible they could have had many rings. And slowly, the rings, they kind of like crunch together. Uh, sometimes when these moons are, are softer, they start to kind of squeeze together. And sometimes they flatten out on the edges like a tortilla. But no one's really sure why these moons are, are kind of the shape. Saturn has a lot of uh, really pretty nice moons. One of my favorite ones is also around called Enceladus. It sounds like Enceladus. This is a moon covered in snow. But the funny thing about this moon is that it leaks water. So here's a picture of Enceladus from far away. You see that little white plume down there? That's water coming out of the moon. It leaks water like a broken hose. It's about 400 gallons a second. It's doing it all the time. It's doing it right now. The water goes out into space. And then um, because space, yes? Is that 
water turn into ice? Exactly. As soon as it hits space, the space is so cold, it freezes, turns to snow, and falls back down onto themselves. Does it fall on Earth? No, Earth is too far. Hmm. Yeah, we're too far. You know. We're about 80 million miles from Saturn. Will it run out of water? Um, well, no one knows for sure, actually. We're not even sure how much water it has on the inside. Interesting. Uh, but it's like Earth. You know how Earth gets hotter when you go down? Well, even the little ice moons, they get hotter as they go down. It's just not as hot. But it's hot enough for that so that the inside can melt into water. So maybe it's like a little cycle, you know, it kind of sinks down, melts as it gets to the bottom and it's brought back up. How does the solar system hold the ice? Well, the ice is held by gravity. So the solar system itself, um, for right now, just pretend it doesn't have gravity on its own. It does, but it's a different thing. Uh, it, like that little moon has its own gravity to hold on to the water. It's just, it's not as much as Earth, but it's just enough to hold on to the ice. It's just like Earth has its own gravity from all the dirt and the rocks it has. Everything that's physical, everything that's real has gravity. All right, you have gravity, but we're so small, our gravity is almost non-existent, like compared to the Earth. So a little icy moon, even though it's very small, it has enough gravity to hold on to its ice. So we're actually going to leave the solar system right now. So our sun is not the only one that has planets around it. Our sun is a star, and all those stars are suns. And we're going to go to another planet that's not in our solar system. This planet has a very beautiful name spoken of in poetry. It is called One Swasp J1407b. I believe the poems go, oh, tis a rose to one swasp J1407b, as a skunk is to a perfume. So we're leaving our solar system. We're going very far, about 400 light years. The reason I'm showing you this planet is because this planet has the biggest rings that we know of. So this planet is a gas giant, just like Saturn. Uh, but this gas giant weighs as much as 12 Jupiters. And now we're going to fly away. This white that you see here, those are the rings of this planet, all right? Now, Saturn's rings basically end where these begin. So Saturn's rings would only kind of go up to here. And watch, let's fly up. You're feeling very sleepy. Very sleepy. When I snap my fingers, you'll buy me a pizza. Oh, it doesn't work. Look at that. Those rings are huge. So those are the rings of one swasp J1407b. The biggest rings that we know of, they're about 63 million miles long. If Earth had these rings, even they would even touch Mars. That's how big they are. Now, where is the, the star that this planet, ah, there it is. That's the star that this planet belongs to right there. It's actually a little bit smaller than our sun, a little bit smaller. So this, this planet goes around this star over here, which is not our sun, once again. Cannot clarify that enough. So let's go back to our solar system. I see, how far away is that? Uh, I don't remember the exact distance, but it's about 400 light years. And wow. one, light, one light year is 5.7 trillion miles. And the fact that this, the rings have lines mean that this, this, this planet has moons as well. Uh, but moons are so, so, so small. Uh, you know, there's only been like eight moons discovered outside our solar system. That's because they're so small. So we're going to Pluto. Pluto, 
Once again, yes, it is not a planet. It is a dwarf planet. But that's because we learn about our solar system and we make more discoveries, things get changed a little bit. Uh, a lot of astronomical names, they, they're very old. They don't really mean a whole lot. But Pluto is still part of our solar system. Remember, it's not just the planets that are part of our solar system. There's moons, there's all sorts of worlds, asteroids. And this is Pluto. Not only that, Pluto is very beautiful. Look at that. It is very, very far away from the sun. I'm, I'm making it spin so that I can show you a, be a better view. There we go. This is sort of the famous part right here, which is the heart. Uh, just kind of hard to see from here. But this is the, the heart. Pluto is far, far away from the sun. The temperatures on Pluto are about negative 380 degrees. It's colder than anything on Earth. It's covered in ice. This is not water ice. Water is not the only thing that freezes in our solar system. All sorts of different things freeze, like this red stuff on, on Pluto. That's a special kind of ice in our solar system known as tholins. Tholins is kind of like frozen gasoline. And this frozen gasoline turns red and sticky when the sunlight hits it. How do you so smell that? Uh, I'll put it in the uh, chat. It's Tholins, T-H-O-L-I-N-S. And it's actually, it's actually a generic term. There's lots of different kinds of Tholins. Uh, some people argue we shouldn't use that term anymore, but it's, it's kind of how I describe it right now. <laughs> but Tholins, it's, it's like frozen gasoline, like frozen tar. So if you're stepping on this ice, it would be sticky, be like, <laughs> even though it's frozen. Now, apparently, I sent it just to one person. <laughs> so that's what that red stuff, it's like frozen gasoline. But this white stuff over here, that's frozen nitrogen. You've heard of liquid nitrogen? Have you ever seen liquid nitrogen? So it's so cold on Pluto that even that's frozen. And we shall go up close to Pluto. And look at that. It looks like it's covered in zebra stripes. It's not very fashionable. But those are actually shadows, They're kind of like wrinkles. Those are sand dunes. But instead of grains of sand, these are grains of ice. So on Earth, sand is made out of broken down pieces of rock. On Pluto, these are made out of broken down pieces of ice. That's how cold it is. It's so far away from the sun that daytime on Pluto is about as bright as a full moon on Earth. So sometimes when it's a full moon, I like to go outside and pretend I'm on Pluto. Except it wouldn't be that cold as it is on Pluto. There is actually frozen water on Pluto, like water ice. If you go over here, actually, let's do this. Those mountains are made out of water ice. They're like giant ice cubes, and they're bigger than any mountains on Earth, even bigger than Mount Everest. They do have a bit of that red sticky ice on top, huh? but they're made out of mostly frozen water, like giant mountain-sized ice cubes for a big drink. That's a little bit of Pluto. It has different kinds of ice, just, you know. It's sitting on it. It's very cold in this part of the solar system. And it gets even colder as you go further out. We're going to go to another dwarf planet called Haumea. This used to be, have they designated Pluto a non or a dwarf planet because of its orbit? Or what made it not become a planet like we learned when we were in school? So uh, basically, uh, it was, a, so yeah, yeah, let's get into that. Uh, before I go to Haumea, let's go to the first ninth planet. Do you know that Pluto was not the first ninth planet? In the year, in the late 1700s, scientists, they, they looked at our solar system and they used their math. You know how they like to use math. And they realized that there was something missing between Mars and Jupiter. Now, you know what's between Mars and Jupiter, right? Mars, Jupiter? 
asteroid belt. Yeah, the asteroid belt. But in the the, the late 1700s, they still they still didn't know about the asteroid yeah. belt. Now, they were like, there has to be a planet there, and so they searched. And then January 1st, 1801, they discovered this world. It's called Ceres. And they were very excited. We finally discovered our ninth planet. But then they discovered another one, and they discovered another one, and they discovered another one, another one, another one, and another one, another one, another one. And by the year 1850, we had 24 planets. But then they realized that these were too small to be planets. They were something else. So then they started to call them asteroids, which means star-like. So Ceres was no longer our first ninth planet. It was an asteroid. The same thing basically happened to Pluto. They discovered a world called Eris. And Eris is about, it's the same size as Pluto. So it's slightly smaller, but it's heavier. And they debated whether or not it should be a planet or not. Should they call this a planet too? If Pluto is a planet, they have to call Eris a planet too. Uh, so they decided to finally decide what planet means. And one, it must be big enough to be a sphere. Pluto has that. It must go around the sun. Pluto does that too. But the third one is kind of a weird one, but basically it must cl have cleared its orbit of all the debris and all the trash around it. See, when the solar system was first formed, there was all sorts of like stuff everywhere, dust, dirt, metal, and almost all the planets kind of cleaned that up, but Pluto did not. Uh, it's still kind of weird, but I think it's almost the correct decision to make them their own thing. Uh, Ceres is now a dwarf planet, like Pluto, as is Eris, Makemake, and Haumea. So it's just, we discover more about our solar system and things change. It just took a lot longer for Pluto because it's so far away. It's harder to find things out there. So this is Ceres, by the way, which looks kind of boring. It's covered in clay. You know why clay is important? Because yeah. things can grow in it. Things can grow in it, but it's made by water. It's made by the, the mixture of water and volcanic, basically minerals. So it's covered in clay, which means that it has to then water. And you see those white spots right there? That's salt. One mixture of different kinds of salt, but salt. So there must have been water on Ceres. And actually, they think there's still water on the inside, muddy, salty water that makes these little salt fields. So they think sometimes that water comes out and like splats out and makes these little salt fields. But it is also you, possible. Uh huh. Do you know the temperature of the planet? Or, or I'm sorry, the whatever you're calling that? Uh, Ceres, I do not know the temperature. Uh, but generally, if it has no atmosphere, It'll be around negative 400 degrees, but it is close to the sun, so that may change. Wow. Uh, I'm going to look it up. I'm going to look it up for you because I actually want to know too. Uh, it's minus 225. I'm going to take it another dwarf planet just because it has a funny shape. It's called Haumea. Look at that. It's shaped like a football. It's made out of ice, mostly water ice. I call it this the ice pickle, the ice football. Ice potato. It has, it has a little bit of that red stuff. They don't know if it's stolen, like on uh, Pluto. And it has little ice rings too. How about, how about another funny shaped world, like uh, Aerocost? So this is a part of the solar system that has its own asteroid belt, icy asteroid belt. Hi. Um, question. Uh -huh. What's your question? Question. Question, answer. Question. What's your question? Um. I would call that football one called ice ball. Ice ball? 
Oh, what'd you call this one? It was like a peanut. Peanut ball. Peanut ball. <laughs> so this part of the solar system has icy asteroids so instead of rock and metal. So there's some funny shaped worlds out there. So now we're going to go to one of my favorite planets. By the way, I always say favorite for things. I have lots of favorites. What's a planet's favorite song? Neptune. Yes, Neptune. I answered a question. Wait, someone has a question? This is Neptune. Don't let its uh, its kind of calm appearance fool you. It's probably one of the most dangerous planets in our solar system. You see, even though it looks all calm and beautiful and blue, we're gonna go to the upper clouds of Neptune. Now the upper clouds of Neptune are made out of ice crystals. And not only that, they're, they move faster than sound on Earth. These clouds are moving at 1,500 miles per hour. These are the fastest clouds in our solar system. They're really, 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 really fast. They call them supersonic clouds. So if you try Is to touch them, they'll the tear you apart. Oh, yeah, right there, that's the sun. That's so cool. Yeah, it's far away from the sun. It's not very bright on Neptune. It's kind of dark. But these clouds, they would tear you apart if you try to touch them. So Neptune is very dangerous because that's fast moving clouds. However, if you can go through these clouds, you'll reach a layer of carbonic acid and water clouds with lightning bigger than Earth. So that's another hurdle that you may go through. But if you go about 3,000 miles deep, it could actually rain diamonds inside of Neptune. So yeah, about 3,000 miles deep into Neptune, it rains diamonds, little tiny diamonds as well. Now, the problem with that layer is it's about 10,000 degrees with incredible pressures. So you would be crushed and then like disintegrated. So Neptune is pretty dangerous. These gas giants are pretty dangerous. How, how were those discoveries made? Well, the, 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 the knowledge of Neptune's interior is actually based on computer simulations. So what they, and for the diamond part, They've actually simulated what Neptune would be like in the lab. So that blue gas, that the, the gas that makes it blue is called methane. Uh, methane is partly made by carbon. And if you don't know, diamonds are made out of carbon. Yeah. So yeah. what they found is that they simulated the pressures and temperature inside of Neptune. And they found that the methane, that carbon solidifies into diamonds on the inside. So this methane could sink to the bottom and as it sinks to the bottom, it gets squeezed into diamonds. And then it'll, and it'll rain down into the mantle. And then it'll melt again, most likely. So it's based on simulations, for sure. We haven't been down there. And there's basically no, really no way to look at inside uh, besides getting the weight and temperature. We can get the weight and temperatures. And then we use that to kind of work from there. So there's a moon of Neptune called Triton. Triton is very unique. It has something only like two worlds in our solar system have. First of all, it's an icy moon. We've only seen this moon once and this picture, the picture I'm about to show you is from the 70s. So please don't not laugh at it. It's old style, all right? So this is Triton. Triton is made out of ice. But see, it has this white fluffy stuff on the bottom. That's ice lava. You see, Triton has ice volcanoes, technically called cryovolcanoes. Volcanoes that instead of very hot lava, they erupt cold lava. Cold lava, so cold that it would freeze you if you touched it. 
chunks of water ice, carbon monoxide ice, ammonia, liquid nitrogen. All that like, stuff comes out of these volcanoes. They tend to be near these black spots. Um, there's black dust inside of Triton, they think, and that black dust pff, comes out when these volcanoes erupt. So those are uh, ice, this Triton as ice volcanoes. So some sort of pressure or gas is causing this eruption? The, the, the thing that they think it is, so that black dust absorbs heat, right? So the ice is transparent and the sunlight goes through the ice into, and it hits the black dust and it creates heat. And that heat fills up and it can, it, it can explode. That's one of the mechanisms that they think for this, uh, this world, but we've actually only been to this world once. It was one of the it was one of the Voyager spacecraft. This picture, this is basically the only good picture of this moon. Um, so there's still a lot to learn, uh, but it is basically a, like one out of two worlds that have ice volcanoes. We're gonna skip Uranus because it's actually probably the most boring planet. It just has the funniest name. Uh, we're gonna go all the way to Jupiter. By the way, the original pronunciation is Uranus. The modern pronunciation is Uranus. So this is Jupiter. Jupiter, again, is a gas giant. So this is a planet made out of clouds. And it is hard to imagine that those clouds, because you mostly just see pictures, but those clouds, they move, they swirl around. It looks like someone's stirring chocolate milk around this planet. Now, the reason you can see colors on Jupiter is because Jupiter is actually kind of hot. Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune are cold. So they're covered in this kind of fog and this fog makes them look blurry, but Jupiter doesn't really have that fog. So you can see kind of like the bandings and the layers, all sorts of different clouds on Jupiter. Now the red spot isn't there at the moment because like Earth, Jupiter spins. So if you wanna see the red spot, we're gonna to have to move time forward. And does Jupiter take like 600 and some days to go around us or whatever's happening or is that a different point? it takes 12 about 12 years to go around the sun once uh so uh like we take one year to go around the sun mars takes about two jupiter takes about 12. So our, pers our perspective huh? of seeing it how often does that happen like you know the moon goes through the cycle every 30 days or 28 days and I, I don't understand like how often Jupiter is um, visible to us. I know I used to frequently see it um, associated with Orion in the winter during one year, but I don't know when that was. Uh, Jupiter just goes, moves in the sky. Uh, it, it doesn't really have any much to do with us at all, really. Um, uh, I don't know how to say it. Uh, I mean, like right now it's right here, but if we move one year, it's gonna be over there. And then if we go next year, I'm sorry, that's not next year, that's next day. Next year, it's gonna be over there, that's Jupiter. So it moves every year, it, it, just like when I showed you the moon earlier moving in our sky, uh, just because Jupiter goes around the sky, uh, basically it moves like 1 12th of the sky Every year, uh, my my uh, my um, Tad, who actually works at another planetary, just told me it's thirty degrees every year. Uh, thirty degrees, ten degrees is like one fist stretched out in front of you in the sky. So if you want to see how much it moves in one year, you stretch out your fist and you make three fists in the skies. That's about thirty degrees. That's why I was extra embarrassed about the mistake I made earlier, because one of my planetariums is a persons are here too. <laughs> so yeah, it, it, it moves in our sky. Uh, 
it, it has nothing to do with the stars and everything. It's just, it's going around the sun. And it takes 12 years for it to go around the sun in our sky. Um, like Jupiter, Saturn takes 27 years. Uh, Uranus is like 60 something. And Neptune is about 130. And so when it's when these things are visible to us at different times of the year, that's due to what? Uh, just where Earth is around the sun. Okay, our position. Uh, actually, I just realized I could show you that better. Um, uh, Space Engine is not the good, best program for uh, orbits. So. Well, that program starts up and my computer lights on fire. Uh, this is the red spot. The red spot is like the eye of a hurricane. It's very calm in the center. But the wind speeds around it get up to 400 miles per hour. Now, Jupiter has one of my favorite moons. It is called Io or how it was originally pronounced, Eu. I call this the cheese moon, because it looks like stinky cheese. And it is actually the stinkiest moon in the solar system. I was waiting for this picture to load. I have too many pictures up, so let's start closing those down. So this is Io. You see all those little black spots? Those are all volcanoes. And the lava on Io turns yellow, orange, and green because it has a lot of something called sulfur. Sulfur smells like rotten eggs. So if you're standing on this moon, it would smell like rotten eggs. That's why it's the stinkiest moon in the solar system. And one of the cool things too, is if you go to the night side, you can see all the glowing, ah, uh, I have too many programs up. You can see all the glowing lava lakes. It's kind of creepy. So let me just show you this real quick. So this is our solar system. This is a program called Universe Sandbox. There's the sun, there's Mercury going around every 88 days, Venus every 223 Earth days, 365. So let's see, this is Earth. So the night side is always gonna be away from the sun, right? So the day side would be facing towards Earth and night side is always gonna face away, all right? So like right here, you would see Mars in the night sky because it's right there away from the sun. And now, uh, I can't see any other planets. There's Jupiter right here. This Earth and the sun and Jupiter are there. So you wouldn't really see Jupiter in the night sky because it's, it's, from our perspective, it would be too close to the sun. But as Earth got to here, the sun's over there, but now Jupiter's on the other side, on the night side. Does that make sense? This is an awesome program. It is. This program is actually made for different things. Um, I may run it at the end if there is time. I don't know if they might, if they might be going over my time. So what I'm gonna do now? Actually, no. Let's go. Let's go to Mars, real quick. You see those white box appear? Yeah, there you go. Got to move it out of the way. This is Mars. Now Mars is a rocky planet like Earth, but it's smaller, so it doesn't have as much gravity as Earth. Now there's a couple of good things that come with that. It means that Mars can have really big mountains and they don't weigh as much as they would on Earth. In fact, Mars has the biggest volcano in the solar system. In fact, right there, there we go.
This is Olympus Mons, the biggest volcano in the solar system. It is so big, you can fit the whole state of New Mexico inside of it. And it is about three times taller than Everest. It's one of the, it's one of the things about being a, a small planet. You can have big mountains, they don't weigh as much. However, because it's smaller and has less gravity, it couldn't hold on to its water. Mars used to have water about 3 billion years ago. Okay, I'm gonna show you an actual picture of Mars. Greetings. My name is Curiosity. I am a rover. I am like a robot that roves around. So I am a rover. I was built on Earth, then sent to Mars to study Mars. Was it inside of something to get it there? It just yes. looks so delicate. I am the size of a truck, and I assure you, I am no delicate. <laughs> you see, I was built on Earth, then I was put in a rocket. There is no sound in space, so I'm going to mute this. You see, I was inside a little capsule where I traveled for about a year and a half. There's me. Now, as we slowed down to about one to two miles per hour, which took a lot of effort and the giant parachute. Now it's safe for me to exit. And I had this backpack or jetpack called Sky Crane. Sky, Sky Crane lowered me to the ground safely. And once I was safely on the ground, Sky Crane let go and crashed somewhere else. And that is how I landed on Mars. I have been here since 2012. They still haven't told me when I'm going back, but I have high hopes. I have also discovered that this place used to be a lake. Well, anyways, that has been your tour of Mars. I have been told it looks like New Mexico. Have a good rest of your day or whatever it is on earth right now. Did you say what the temperature was there or is there? The highest it gets on Mars is 80 degrees. Most of the time it's below freezing. And so that's, it's very cold. I mean, that's, it's amazing to me that it's that durable. Oh yeah. Uh, well, it, it does have its own little problems. Let's pretend they're not back. Like, uh, you know, the wheels have been getting dents and holes in it because of all the rocks. Uh, the new one they're sending that's about kind of the same design has better wheels. Uh, it has a nuclear battery, which keeps it really warm because it's pretty big. Mo uh, before this, most rovers were like the size of microwaves or something. This one's the size of a, a truck. That's incredible. You could ride it. Wow. I am no pony. <laughs> so the way I like to usually end my little programs is I like to look about stars. Of course, we're going to start with our very own sun. Now the sun is literally a ball of fire. All right. Some people think it has lava, it does not. It is actually too hot for lava. If you had a bucket of lava from Earth and you poured it on the sun, it would just disintegrate. And then the bucket would melt and then you would melt too. The sun is again, a ball of fire, it's called plasma. And it is super, super hot. The outside of the sun, this part that you can see is about 6,000 degrees. No, don't put your tongue on the sun. It'll burn your tongue.
So the outside of the sun, the part you see is about 6,000 degrees. The inside of the sun is 20 million degrees. If you had a coffee mug full of something 20 million degrees hot, it's hot enough to destroy, to burn the entire United States. 20 million degrees is really hot. So as we get closer to the sun, you see all these things that look like corn? Those are actually bubbles. The sun bubbles. Even though it's made out of fire, it bubbles, it boils. Here, let me show you an actual video of the sun boiling. No, they left. So this is an actual video of the sun boiling. There's special telescopes that are designed to look at the sun. Now, here's the thing, funny thing about our sky. Every star you see in the night sky is bigger than the sun. That's because stars the size of the sun or a small one are too hard for us to see with our human eyes. We see the sun just because it's really close. But even if, you, if our sun would just left the solar system a little bit, you wouldn't see it anymore. That's why every star you see in the sky is bigger than the sun, because they're big and bright. Those small stars are out there, but we can't. We can see them with telescopes. Now I'm going to take you to probably the biggest star that we know of. It has a funny name. It's called UY Scuti. That's a star, like the sun. You notice how it looks different? First of all. Let me show you how big it is. That's not it. There you go. So this is UI Scooty. There's the sun right over here. Can you see it? Let me zoom in a little bit closer. You see the sun now? That little yellow dot. Can zoom in even further. That dot right there, that is the sun compared to this star. Our sun is a little tiny dot compared to this star. This star is huge. Now, big stars look very lumpy. That's because they're so hot on the inside that the bubbles these stars make are almost the size of the entire star. In fact, there's one bubble right here. That's one bubble. Now I'm gonna show you an actual video of a big star boiling. This is, not, this is not the same star, it's a different star, but it's still a big star. So that's how big stars look when they boil. This is over four years. So they have these big massive bubbles and they, those bubbles come out and they make it like stretch out and they kind of like curl and they're like super lumpy. That's why big stars are really lumpy. That is phenomenal. I just can't even believe that. Yeah, they're pretty cool. They don't live very long too, these big stars. Also, the color of a star is how hot it is on the top, all right? Not how hot it is on the inside. So even though this star is almost probably about 200 million degrees on the inside, which is way hotter than our sun's 20 million degrees. The outside of the star is actually colder than our sun's. That's why it's red. It's a red hypergiant. But the inside is way, way hotter. So I'm, I'm just gonna show you really a couple different stars. This is a uh, Rigel. Blue stars are the stars that are the hottest on the outside. UI Scudia, by the way, is really, really, really far away. It's technically not even in our galaxy. Uh, Rachel, do you have a question? Um, I'm probably going to leave soon because it's dark on my side. Ah, uh, yes, it is dark here too. I'm about to be, I'm almost done. Okay. This is Rigel. Rigel is a blue giant. Let me show you how big Rigel is. It's not as big as UI Scooty for sure. But there's our sun, and then this is Rigel. 
So it is bigger than the sun, but not nearly as big as US students. Look at that, it's a blue star. This is how hot it is on the outside. Blue stars can be from 10 to 20,000 degrees. White, yellow stars are in the middle and then red stars are the coldest. But again, that's just on the outside. So let's go back to the Earth. And the last thing I'm going to show you, I'm going to, I'm going to turn the sun into UI scooting. All right? And we're going to see what happens to our solar system when I do that. What do you think will happen to our solar system if I turn the sun into UI scooting? Will we enjoy long? <laughs> yes. All right, so we're back in the solar system. I'm actually going to switch programs from Space Engine, but Space Engine is pretty great. Although it does kind of need a strong computer to run. If you want like the really fancy images. So this is Universe Sandbox. You can do different things in Universe Sandbox. Like I can actually throw stars at our solar system. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to turn the sun into UI Scooty. And we're going to see what happens to our solar system. So here's the sun. I'm going to, let's see, rip action, replace stars, UI Scooty. Watch this. So look out here. Look at how far it gets. So big that Jupiter, it absorbed Jupiter, all the planets that were within Jupiter. So it absorbed Mercury. Venus, Earth, Mars, and Jupiter, they're all destroyed now. They're, they were inside this star. Look at Saturn is being pulled in by the gravity. It's falling in. Look, it's on fire. It's lost all its clouds. They're probably boiled off. And oh, there goes Saturn. It crashed into UI Scooty. Now here's Uranus. Uranus still has its clouds, but as you can see, it's kind of on fire. <laughs> At least the side of the Uranus that is facing the star. It'll probably lose its clouds really fast. Actually, I can see how fast it's losing its clouds. Yeah, pretty, not that fast. So the hydrogen is going down, but not super fast. I'm going to make time go by faster so that we can see it. And then, ah, boop, there goes Uranus. No, Neptune, you're fast clouds. Oh, there's Pluto now, you're so pretty. So the gravity of UI Scooty, there's Haumea, the egg-shaped world on oh, no. Make, make. So the gravity of this world basically just pulled everything in. Destroyed our solar system. All right, I think I'll end it there. Unless there's questions or anything else you'd like to see. I think this will, this will do just fine. Rachel. <laughs> Where'd the earth go? The Earth didn't even have a chance. As soon as that star appeared, it was just burned up because it was inside. Oh, OK. <laughs> Before you go, could you explain the difference between a star and a planet? Well, basically, uh, well, Earth, planets like Earth are just, you know, they're small and they're rocky. And they're round. Uh, Jupiter actually could have become a star if it were bigger. If it were at least 100 times bigger, it would have become a, a red dwarf. Um, but really, a star is just a lump of gas and dust that became so hot that it could do something called fusion. See, inside a star, all the gas and all the atoms are crashing into each other because it's so hot and moving so fast. Everything inside the star is just crashing, making all this energy. It's called fusion. And that's what's happening inside a star. Once you start fusion, that's, what you, that's when you make a star. So Jupiter doesn't have fusion. Uh, so that's why it's not a star. It's a planet. And because it goes around a star. I hope that made sense. I know a lot of these kids probably don't have a lot of uh, <laughs> atom knowledge. But basically, all the atoms inside a star, when things are hot, atoms are moving really fast. And inside a sun, they're moving so fast that they're just, boom, crashing into each other. And when they crash into each other, they make heat. 
And that's what makes a star. When all these atoms inside the star are moving so fast, they're crashing into each other, making heat. That's not happening inside Jupiter. So that's what makes Jupiter a planet and not a sun. Jupiter needs to be about 100 times bigger, though, too. Again, to become a star. But the bigger the star is, the faster it burns through its fuel. So our sun will live a total of about 10 to 11 billion years, whereas a star like UI Scuti will only live a few millions of years. It will explode. Our sun will not explode. Well, thank you very much, Assis, for the wonderful program. Thank you all for joining us. Have a good rest of your night, everyone. Night. Thank Bye. you so much. Thank awesome you. program. Okay. You're very welcome. Have a good night. night. We're going to get the program. <laughs> yes, we're going to download all the programs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, if you want the list, just uh, send it to me. Email me or something, and I'll get you. Yeah, we'd like to get it. We'll email it and we'll get it to us. Yeah, I can send it to anyone that, that would like. Just send it to me, Assis. Okay, that's true. I think that would be easy. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much.